Now we're going to talk about how to solve this linear ODE system. Remember the theory says that just as before it has a homogeneous part and a particular part. We'll put off talking about the particular part for later. For now let's just focus on the homogeneous part. The theory again tells us that it's a linear combination of n solutions, x1 to xn. n here is the dimensionality of x. And it's critical that these x1, x2, and so on all be independent solutions of the homogeneous problem. We can also collect those independent solutions as columns of a matrix phi. So phi will end up being n by n. And remember, this is called a fundamental matrix. Again, what we saw in the theory was that we could also write the homogeneous solution as phi of t times a vector c of arbitrary constants. Something we didn't look at before is that phi has its own important property. If we take its derivative, we end up taking the derivative column-wise. And then each of these xj's is a solution of the homogeneous problem. So x1 prime equals a x1, and so on. And because of the properties of matrix and matrix vector multiplication, we can take that a outside on the left. So we see this is all just a times phi again. So from beginning to end, Phi, prime, or phi also satisfies the differential equation. Phi prime equals A phi. Now that's all nice, but the real question is how do you actually get your hands on phi? And the real answer is that in almost every case it's really hard. So we're going to specialize to the most important case which is the constant coefficient problem. And all that means is that this coefficient matrix A doesn't really depend on time, it's constant. And then we can do quite a bit. So now we have our constant coefficient system, and we're going to look at an eigenvalue eigenvector pair. And then we end up just kind of guessing the right way to find a solution. We're going to have an unknown function g of t times one of these eigenvectors. And we'll just plug that into both sides of x prime equals ax. So x prime is just g prime times v because v is constant. a times x, and we put in what x is. And then g is a scalar, so it's allowed to move around through the multiplications. But av by definition, is lambda v. We chose it to be an eigenvector. Now we have these two things. Can we make these two things equal to each other? And the answer is clearly yes, if g is chosen in such a way that g prime equals lambda g. And we know all about that, right? That just has exponential solutions, e to the lambda t.
let's look at the bigger picture. If we count multiplicities, then A, which is n by n, has n eigenvalues. So let's call them lambda 1 up to lambda n. Let's say we have eigenvectors to go with them. So v1 to vn, right, vj goes with lambda j. Then we have n different solutions to the homogeneous problem. Right? x1 is equal to e to the lambda 1t times v1, etc., etc. In general, xj is e to the lambda jt times vj for all the different possible values of j. So now we have n solutions of the homogeneous problem. The only thing that we haven't addressed is whether or not they are independent solutions. Again, from the theory, we know that we only have to check the independence of the solutions at one time. If they're independent at one time, then they'll be independent at all times. So we'll pick t equals 0. But when t is equal to 0, xj just equals vj. The really, the only question we have to answer then is, whether v1, v2, up to vn are an independent set of eigenvectors. Well, either this is possible or it isn't. If it's impossible for some particular matrix, we say that matrix is defective. Kind of a harsh word, but that's the term. Most of the time, that does not happen. We can choose an independent set of eigenvectors, and then we know how to find our general homogeneous solution. It's just a linear combination of the xj's. Here's an example of a constant coefficient system of dimension 2. I'll remind you how to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. This is just like from the first chapter, so you can skip ahead if you feel comfortable with that already, but here it is. We find the characteristic polynomial, which is the determinant of a minus lambda i, which means we subtract lambda from the diagonal terms and take the determinant. That works out to be lambda squared minus 2 lambda plus 1 minus 4, so that's minus 3. And that polynomial factors as lambda minus 3 times lambda plus 1. So we'll let 3 be lambda 1 and negative 1 be lambda 2. It doesn't matter what order you pick them in. Then we have to find eigenvectors to go with them. So we look at a minus lambda 1i. And in the 2 by 2 case, we have this shortcut. Just look at the first row of this matrix. And we can get an eigenvector by reversing the order of those two, and then negating one of those two numbers. Now 
Then for lambda 2, we do a minus lambda 2 times i. And we're again going to use our 2 by 2 shortcut. Take the first row, reverse the order, and hit one with a negative sign. Now, I'm not going to show that these two vectors are independent for reasons I'll get into in a minute. But they are, and so therefore the ODE solution is a combination of e to the lambda 1 t v1 and e to the lambda 2 t v2. Which, to write out, we can put in what all the lambdas and v's are. C1 and C2 are arbitrary constants. If we like, we can combine these into a single vector expression. Either expression is fine, though. All right, then why didn't I bother to show that the eigenvectors were independent in that example? Well, there's this very important fact that holds in general. If the eigenvalues in the matrix are all distinct numbers, there are no repeats, then A is not defective. The converse of this is not true. If you do have repeated eigenvalues, a may or may not be defective. You have to look at some more information. But in the 2 by 2 case, actually, that's also a very easy determination. So if you're in the 2 by 2 case and you have a repeated eigenvalue, it's just one double eigenvalue, then there are only two possibilities. Either a is a diagonal matrix, or it's defective. And actually, it's a little bit more specific than that. It's a diagonal matrix, and both diagonal values are just the eigenvalue. So in fact, it's just a multiple of the identity matrix. So the repeated eigenvalue case is pretty easy to figure out in the 2 by 2, for larger matrices, it's more subtle.